اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبح للہ ما فی السماوات و ما فی الارض و هو العزیز الحکیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لما تقولون ما لا تفعلون قبر مقتن اند اللہ ان تقولوا ما لا تفعلون ان اللہ یحب الذین یقاتلون فی سبیله صفا کأنہم بنیان مرسوس وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَ تُوزُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ فَلَمَّا زَاغُ وَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ صدق اللہ العظیم My respected brothers and sisters Inshallah today in next uh, 25 30 minutes i will do some brief tafsir of these five ayahs i have just read surah saf as we all know this is a madri uh, surah and in this surah the focus of this surah is struggle in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this surah starts with sabbaha and this is a past sentence that everything which is in the universe samawat and earth glorifies allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exalts allah who is huwal azizul hakim who is who is almighty and all wise. In other, if we go to the very next surah, which starts with Yusabbih, which is Fail Madare, which is Madare in Arabic represents the present and future. So if we see these uh, surahs in which they start with Sabbah or Yusabbih, that means that everything in the universe is, is exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the past, in the present, and it will continue in the future. There are several meanings when we talk about the tasbih, when we talk about that the earth and skies are doing you know, tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first meaning of that is that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its creation itself is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its khaliq, because of the perfection. So things are very obvious when you see the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like if you have a painter who has his artwork, the painting itself speaks of the, the painter. The second meaning of tasbih is the literal verbal tasbih, that whatever you have in the universe is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is, as it is said, you know, in... Uh, Many of the surahs where Hazrat Dawood story is mentioned about Hazrat Dawood that like in Surah Sabah, in Surah Saad, in Surah Anbiya, and in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he has given this power to Dawood whenever he used to do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mountains around him, the birds around him, they also used to do the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu man fi samawati wal ard wa tayru safat kullun qad alima salatahu wa tasbiha wallahu alimun bima yaf'alun. Now there is another meaning of this tasbih, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created his creations. 
and whatever job and task he has assigned to his creations these creations are doing the very same task so number 1 was that the creation speaks for itself number 2 was the verbal tasbih and number 3 that they do their assigned work you know there is uh, there is another uh, definition that which i want to uh, go through whenever we talk about tasbih tasbih basically is that they do the tasbih the universe everything is doing tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala one meaning of this is that why don't you human being do the tasbih of the creator whose tasbih is done by everything else what's wrong with you why don't you do the same the second meaning is that allah subhanahu wa taala is so great where all around this universe doing his tasbih allah subhanahu wa taala is carefree he is unfazed if you don't do his tasbih because if you do his tasbih this is not going to increase the greatness of allah subhanahu wa taala the maqam of allah subhanahu wa taala the waqar of allah subhanahu wa taala some of the scholars have said a very different thing about this whole you know concept of tasbih they say that allah subhanahu wa taala has created human being as a unique creature this is a not a regular creation of allah subhanahu wa taala so allah subhanahu wa taala has not created human being just for the tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala rather the purpose of human being is more than just the tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala i'm going to share with you a little poetry you know iqbal iqbal's poetry really a true tafsir of quran and about these first four ayahs what iqbal says ya wusat e aflaq mein takbeer e musalsal ya khaak ke aagosh mein tasbeeh o manajat wo mazhab e mardan e khud aagah wa khuda mast ye mazhab e mulla o jamaadat o nabata the meaning is that the one who really understands that what is the purpose of his creation he makes this takbir of allah subhanahu wa taala part of his life he is a true representative of allah subhanahu wa taala in this universe he is busy day and night making sure that the tasbih the waqar the muqam of allah subhanahu wa taala stays the highest ya wusat e aflaq mein takbeer e musalsal to he is busy on this planet wherever he gets the opportunity he is busy to making sure that the takbeer of allah subhanahu wa taala stays the highest contrary to that there are some people ya khaak e aagosh mein tasbeeh o manaja there are people they are just in a masjid or they are in khanka or they are in their houses isolated they are just busy doing in tasbeeh and munajat of allah subhanahu wa taala these are the people about whom iqbal says ye mazhab e mulla o jamaadat o nabatat tasbeeh of allah subhanahu wa taala exclusively was the work of jamaadat and nabadat these non living mountains and stones this was their job this was their, this was their work or nabata these plants these trees these vegetables vegetations this was the work of 
all these jamadat and nabatat to do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or mullah, mullah doesn't mean all the, you know, uh, ulama. He calls mullah to specifically people who exclude this dunya from deen. And they feel like that Islam or deen has just a limited, you know, a vision of to doing tasbih and zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Must rakho zikro fikre subha gahi me ise, ukhta tar kardo mizaj e khan kahi me ise. Keep him busy. This is shaitan saying to his agents, keep Muslims busy in just doing tasbih and don't let them go to their main reason of creation. My brothers and my sisters, this is really a very important concept that we all have to understand. That this deen has not come just for tasbih. And if we go to the, the next ayah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. Oh, you believe why you say what you do not do. This is very important that Islam believes in walk the talk. And Islam hates this concept that we have a split personality. That whatever we do, whatever we say, we do not deliver that. You know, there was a priest who said one time that do what I say, do not do what I do. And unfortunately, as a Muslim, we are, most of us are now falling in that category. Remember one thing, brothers and sisters, thousand speeches cannot change one person if there is no action behind those speeches. But one person who is practicing this deen, he can change from his example thousand people. And we have to also understand one thing, that fake actions do not fly very far. There is no baraka. If we are sincere in our action, and we deliver what we say, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to penetrate the hearts of the people for us. But if these are just empty words, then there are many people, many people who claim, who give speeches. Those speeches do not go and, you know, penetrate the hearts of the people. So we have to understand this very important thing that Whatever we say, we have to make sure we deliver. And this was the quality of Sahaba. And that's why Prophet, one of the, you know, thing about Munafiqeen, he said that Munaf, this is one of the quality of Munafiqeen that they do not fulfill their promises. In our deen, if we have promised something, if we have taken oath of something, then we have to fulfill that promise, that oath. Otherwise, there are consequences of that. And especially if we have promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about something, then we have it's a serious task. Then it's a serious promise that we have to deliver. We say Allahu Akbar six times in Azan. We say Allahu Akbar six times in our takbir. We say six times when we finish, we, when we finish each raka, each raka when we finish, we say six times Allahu Akbar. What is the meaning of Allahu Akbar? That Allah will be, will have status higher than anything else in my life. Do we really have that? If we do not have that, that means we are also falling in the same category that Lima Takuluna Mala Taf Alun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that great is hatred in the sight of Allah 
that you say what you do not do. The next ayah talks about that who Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really loves. Inna Allah yuhibbu allazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan ka annahum bunyanum marsus. That indeed Allah loves those who fight in his cause in a row as though they are single structure joint family. I'm going to go in a little bit of detail here to make uh, you understand what is bunyanum marsus. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people, they struggle in his path. And when they go in his path, there is a unity. And that unity is to the, is to the extent that nobody can penetrate through this wall. Nobody can divide them. This bunyanu marsus, the strongest possible structure, the wall which is, has a strong foundation, the wall which nobody can penetrate, the wall which is unbreakable. This bunyanu marsus can happen only by people who have clarity and understanding of their mission. When they go in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they know what they are doing and they understand the task, the mission, the vision, and they have certainty, yaqeen, conviction, confidence on what they are going to do, and they have commitment, they have made this mission life, their life mission, and they have given priority to this mission in their life and they love this mission until and unless we have these qualities we cannot become bunyanu marsus because you know bunyanu marsus can only happen if we have people who are committed people who really show certainty people who have made this deen as the mission of their life, and this is the priority of their life, and they love this. The, the uh, next ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, talks about Bani Israel. You know, in first four ayahs, this is basically a preface of this surah. The next four ayahs, they talk about Bani Israel, the acts of Bani Israel, the condition of Bani Israel. The first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Wa is qala Musa li qawmihi ya qawmi lima tuzunani wa qad ta'lamuna anni rasulullahi ilaykum falamma zaghu azaghu allahu kulubahum wallahu la yahdil qawm al-fasiqeen. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and mention, O Muhammad, when Moses said to this, his people, O my people, why do you harm me? While you are certainly know that I am the messenger of Allah to you. And when they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate. And Allah does not guide the definitely disobedient people. My brothers and sisters here, inshallah, I'm going to spend a few minutes to understand the consequences of deviation. As you know, the people of Bani Israel, they not only were giving uh, this, uh, you know, uh, they are not only bothering Musa alayhi salam, you know, by talking about his personality, and defects, but also by denying the very goal and mission of Musa alayhi salam, Moses alayhi salam. 
the mission of musa alayhi salam was huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yuzhirahu ala al din kullihi walau karih al mushriku shara lakum min al din ma wassa bihi nuh wa allazi awhayna ilayka wa ma wassayna bihi ibrahim wa musa wa isa an aqimu al din wa la tatafarraqu fi so when musa alayhi salam is saying that you are hurting me this was the biggest hurt that they were not following the mission of musa alayhi salam and the biggest punishment for the people who deviated from the real path that allah subhanahu wa taala has taken away the hidayah you know hidayah in this dunya is the biggest bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala if hidayah is taken away from somebody then he is going to just stay in a darkness where he will not be able to see the light to walk through the life of this dunya and allah subhanahu wa taala say that he does not give hidayah to fasiqin fis fisk in arabic is said to date khajur date which is defective and the defect is very obvious and when allah subhanahu wa taala takes away the hidayah from these people who are fasiq that they do sins openly so these are the people they had diseases in their heart and allah subhanahu wa taala when he takes away this hidayah because of their action then these diseases they come outwardly they allah subhanahu wa taala exposes them so their diseases become obvious like that date which has a defect fisk brothers and sisters when hidayah is taken away from the fasiqin the people who are the sinners then these are the people in many parts of the quran we have to understand what are the consequences khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala samihim wa ala absarihim qishawat wa lahum azabun azim they are not deaf they are not blind but they cannot see the truth they cannot see the light because that light is taken away from them that tawfiq is lifted from their life and now their life you may see people you know financially they are very well off they look like living a very good life and a lot of time our muslim brothers and sisters they also get confused you know the punishment of allah subhanahu wa taala comes in many ways and we see in our time and age when people have gone away from hidayah that we see people's misery we see how people are suffering we see the people more suicides loneliness psychiatric problems family you know situations breaking families kids are going away from the family so all kind of things we see in today's time because of that noor is lifted that hidayah is lifted from the people who have decided themselves this was their decision they have decided to go against the path of allah subhanahu wa taala so we have to understand a lot of time i have seen brothers and sisters they say let me give you an example that interest that's basically violation going against the will of allah subhanahu wa taala and his message and people say that you look around people who are indulge in riba they are flourishing they are they are you know having good life see the prosperity in their life but if you go in the real inside story of their life you see these are people they have their hearts are not soft anymore 
these are the people they take advantage of the needs of the people these are the people they are having miserable family lives these are the people where you see all the dif different depression suicide and many other problems these are the people in the society because of them you see that the baraka is lifted there is no baraka in time there is no baraka in money there is no baraka in life yes on face you see this you know uh, that they are doing very well but inside the story is that things are going pretty bad so i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives us tawfiq and if i recap the message of today's five ayahs the number one message is my brothers and my sisters that when allah subhanahu wa taala say that tasbih is done by everything in this universe and why you don't do the tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala human being lima taquluna ma la taf'alun why you say what you don't do basic message is that as a human being our task was not just the tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala our task was to deliver this message of allah subhanahu wa taala to every human being on this planet our task was to provide the treatment of the disease the humanity is facing today our task was to make this mission mission of our life we are not created just to do the tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala and whenever we say allahu akbar when we say la ilaha illa allah and there is no god but allah then we have to prove it in our practical life that they, whatever we say we mean it and if we will not do that then we will qualify for the wrath of allah subhanahu wa taala my brothers and sisters then when allah when we do not follow what we say when we do not deliver what we promise when we claim something which we do not deliver then hidayah will be taken away from us and this is that we are going away from the message we are going away from the path of allah subhanahu wa taala from the task he has given you and me and when we go away from the path and hidayah is taken away then we are left in a dark darkness and there is no light for us to walk in this life to reach to our destiny the destiny of success ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainna ارجعي الى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي this was our destiny but if we will not follow the message of quran then that light which can guide us to reach to that destiny will be taken away so as a muslim today our goal our task is the message of today's this uh, tafsir is that we should give wake up call to each other that we are here for a mission we are here for a task we are here not just for salah or hajj or umrah but rather we are here with the mission that we work for the welfare of the humanity for the suffering that we can take away the suffering of the humanity this should be our task wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin well, the first question um you talked about the importance of being on the right path um and the concern that one must have that um the hidayah may be taken away from them can you review for us what are some of the best ways of trying to seek the hidayah from allah what should we be doing in our life Uh, in order to to seek the hidayah from allah jazakallahu khairan the first thing we should do we should try to understand that why allah subhanahu wa taala has created us the purpose of our life and the purpose of life could be very well explained by the last hidayah we have in our hands 
Quran and the seerah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The second thing we should do, we should try to practice as much as we could what Quran and the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu requires from us. The third thing we should do to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He is the one who guides our hearts and He is the one who can keep our hearts on the straight path. And number four, try to stay in the company of the people who are God fearing, because in this time and age, you know, living in isolation or going away from such company. is like you are giving yourself in the hands of shaitan so this is very important to stay in the company of people who are god fearing keep asking allah subhanahu wa taala for hidayah and use the main source of hidayah quran and the seerah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to know what really is the purpose of our life jazakallah khair inshallah the next question You talked about the importance of tasbih, and the question you raise: Why don't we do enough tasbih? You also raise the point that tasbih is not something that should be done in isolation. Tasbih also needs to have an effect on our actions and our approach to uh, the deen and the work of the deen. Can you review, firstly, what are the best etiquettes and the best timings for doing tasbih, and secondly? How can the tasbih have an influence on our approach for the work of the deen? Jazakallah khair. As I said, you know, tasbih. Whenever we talk about tasbih, and when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is mentioning that everything in the universe is doing His tasbih, the most important message, the spirit of that message is. that every creation of allah subhanahu wa taala is doing its assigned work assigned job tasbih is not just the name of subhanallah alhamdulillah allah akbar tasbih is that you actually live according to what allah subhanahu wa taala has assigned you a task so if you are saying allah akbar so you practically live that life if you are saying subhan allah you really mean okay. it that allah subhanahu wa taala is the only one has no defect he is the one who is perfect and whenever you are saying alhamdulillah that you are really mean that whatever bounties allah subhanahu wa taala has given you you are saying alhamdulillah on that and the biggest bounty of allah subhanahu wa taala is the hidayah so the best you know one time hazrat ali went in a masjid and he saw somebody doing tasbih subhanallah subhanallah alhamdulillah astaghfirullah 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 hazrat ali said to him azza wa taala no there is a istighfar needed on your istighfar because we have to understand what we are saying so we really should mean what we are saying to so tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala is the understanding of sifat of allah subhanahu wa taala understanding what i am saying understanding that what are the practical implications of what i am saying so the best of the tasbih is that we live the life of quran best of the tasbih is that what you know some somebody asked aisha about the ikhlaq of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he she said that have you not read quran so the practical application of the message of this deen that is the best tasbih that we can do yes there are formal tasbihat we do and for both those tasbih tasbihat also i will recommend that go slowly you know like for for example you know tasbih fatimi that we do subhanallah alhamdulillah allah akbar after every sala tasbihat we do after fajr sala you know some recommendations by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam read khulu allah 
one time you read, you get the sawab of one third of the Quran, read Surah Mulk before you go to bed. So these are all, you know, recommended tasbihat, but really tasbihat, we have made just the verbal, you know, exercise of our tongue. But in the life of Sahaba and Tabayin and Tabe Tabayin, we see whenever they do tasbih, they also live their life according to that tasbih. You talked a little bit about the difficulties that people face in life and that these may be a sign that we're indulging in something that goes against the command of Allah. However, we can also face difficulties in our life as a test from Allah in order to become closer to Allah. So when we have these difficulties in our life, how do we know which camp we're in? Are we in the camp where we're facing difficulties because we're doing something against the command of Allah and Allah is making our life difficult? Or are we in the camp that Allah is giving us deliberately a test so that we can remember him more and seek his help more? How do we know which category we're in? Very simple formula. If any trial, hardship we are facing, if because of that I am getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that means this was the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me to bring me closer to him. But if any trial or hardship pushes me away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this was the punishment of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me. This is a very simple formula. And as, as you said, this is very right. There are some people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to clean their sin in this dunya through the trial and hardship. There are people in this dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to raise their ranks by putting them through the hardship and difficulty in this dunya. So that is true. So the simple thing, as I said, uh, I don't have to repeat that if we are getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these trials, then perfectly fine. This is a bounty and blessing of Allah. But if we are going away from Allah, then we should, you know, give ourselves a wake up call that we are on a wrong boat. Jazakallah, Kara. And inshallah, this will be the final question. Um, you mentioned that our task is really to deliver the message of Islam to humanity. And obviously, this is a very big task. This is the, the task of the all of the prophets uh, had this task. Uh, can you review for us what do you feel are the different dimensions in which we can um, you know, fulfill this task of delivering the message of Allah uh, in our daily lives. What are some general things we should be doing uh, towards this objective? The first thing is faham deen, that we should try to understand this deen ourselves. Number two, I should apply that, that deen on myself. Number three, I should try to apply this deen in my family, in my extended family. Number four, that I should reach out to my community at large, Muslims or non-Muslim. To Muslims, I should reach out and try to teach them that we should, we should be the ambassadors of Islam in this part of the world. We should have a, a better face of Islam. We should show the human face of Islam. We should try to give dawah through our practical life. And to non-Muslims, we should reach out and show them that Islam is a face which cares about humanity. Dawa. Muslims are here to help people who are suffering. The biggest suffering is that we go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we lose this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So reaching out to non-Muslims to give them this dawah of Islam, this is another task that we should be doing while we are living, you know, in this part. Allah.